Hello everyone, my name is xrag 9 and most of you have probably never heard of me, and you're wondering why this video is being posted. Well, to give a little background about myself, I am primarily a Thief main in PvP and World vs. World. In PvE it's a different story, but right now I just want to talk about the player vs. player environments that are available to us in Guild Wars 2. Originally, this video was going to be basically a me ranting for who knows how long about Shadow Arts and why I think the trait line is just stupid and why I don't agree with the changes they're making to it going forward when the trait changes are going to be released. However, the more I thought about it, the more I realized that that isn't really the appropriate thing to take. What Anet wants right now is feedback and me ranting on about how stupid something is isn't the proper way to give feedback. So I sat down and I thought about what exactly is the core of Thief to me as a gameplay model and why exactly is it bothering me so much what they're doing to the class going forward with specifically Shadow Arts. But I'm using Shadow Arts as kind of a building block to talk about an overarching thing, which in this case is going to be counterplay and active gameplay. To me, counterplay and active gameplay are some of the strongest things that Guild Wars 2 has going for it. There's a lot of things you could say like, oh, so let's say, for example, I'm playing Dagger Pistol Thief. I use a lot of blinds and I have interrupts and that's great. Well, what are counters to that? Well, currently in the game, you can have... Uh, Condi removal, you can have stability to block these incoming interrupts, you can have all these things to counter things, but what is one thing that doesn't really have counterplay at the moment, and that's stealth. So, using that as kind of a building block, I want to talk about the current state of the game, and then where the game I think is going, and keep in mind this is coming from someone who primarily roams and does pvp at i would say about a shark level so it's like oh this guy isn't perfect and he's only like a tier 5 roamer so it doesn't his opinion doesn't matter but trust me i spend a lot of time analyzing gameplay more than i do actually playing the game like as much as i play this game I spend even more time analyzing things and knowing skill interactions, and I've thought a lot about this, and I really want to talk about it, because I'm really fearful for what is happening right now. So to give a quick run through of what Thief has currently, I'll show you my build, and then I'll show you a standard Shadow Arts build, and then I'll show you a standard Sword Dagger build. The reason I need to show you all three of these builds is because the two most important lines that are changing and the ones I want to talk about are the changes to the Shadow Arts line and the changes to the Acrobatics line. And depending on which build you're playing, vastly determines which of those lines you're going to be using in the future and currently. So currently, my setup, which is my own personal setup, is 50036. In Deadly Arts, I take Mug and Improvisation, and in Acrobatics, I take Vigorous Recovery. Trickery, I take the standard Thrill the Crime, Bountiful Theft, and Sleight of Hand. So, for any Dagger Pistol players out there, you're probably wondering, wow, this guy's build is really weird. Why does he have acrobatics? There's no acrobatics in Dagger Pistol. Well, it's because I don't play Dagger Pistol as a current, as the usual thief does. I play Dagger Pistol closer to a Sword Dagger Thief. So, rather than going with the standard, oh, I'm Black Powdering, and then I'm Heart Seekering, and then I'm Backstabbing you, that's not what I do very often. I play very actively. I use a lot of Shadow Shot to blind my target. I use a lot of Evades because I go into Acrobatics for the Returned Endurance. And I basically focus on dodging key tells, using Headshot to interrupt things, and blinding my opponent so they can't hit me, because if they can't hit me, then I have no reason to stealth, because that is basically the reason you stealth. So that's my build. That's why I play this style because I have a fundamental problem with Shadow Arts as a trait line, so I do not use it. Now let me switch to a more Shadow Arts build. It would be something more along the lines of this. This is obviously not the only Shadow Arts build, but this is one that can be used and there are many variations. The big key thing is that there are six into Shadow Arts. 
so you get the miners so you're 25 percent health you're cloaking you're removing conditions every three seconds your stealth skills last longer you blind foes when you gain stealth you gain might when you gain stealth and you regenerate health while in stealth every second so now that you have that there's a slightly different utility set up and this is my issue with shadow arts say i'm fighting someone with my standard build and oh maybe they knock me down well it's not really a problem because i just go into stealth and oh look i'm gaining might and i also am regenerating health because i have shadows rejuvenation and i also blinded them because i went into stealth and if i wanted to after i stealth so just for to gain quick stealth i could hide in shadows i can just basically do this and just keep doing this. As long as I have initiative, I can keep doing this as long as I want. And you can do different setups so you have the two initiative every time you gain stealth, and you can pretty much maintain that as long as you want. And this brings up a very interesting point about my first point about counterplay. While there is a lot of counterplay to a thief that isn't stealthing because you can see them, there isn't a lot of counterplay to a thief you can't see. So if I'm stealthing, which one thing to note is that every time this stealth ticks, you're basically gaining a little more might. So you can stack might very fast without ever actually revealing yourself, because every time you're gaining stealth, you're gaining might stacks. So you can build might very fast without ever revealing yourself. The point is, though, in plain sight, it's very easy for classes to counterplay me because they can hit me. But if I'm invisible, that element goes away. They don't have a way to counterplay me. The only way they can counterplay me is if they get lucky and hit me, or they predict exactly what I'm going to do. And you can say, oh, it's really easy to predict what a thief's going to do. They always just want to get behind you and backstab you. But a good thief doesn't necessarily have to do that. You have a lot of options when you're in stealth. For example, I don't have to backstab you, I could steal from you. I could pop my Basilisk Venom. Oh, well, you know what? Too bad. You don't know that I have Basilisk Venom, because I'm already guaranteed pretty much to hit you, unless you're wasting your dodges or popping your cooldowns preemptively, assuming that I'm popped, I've am popped. i popped my Basilisk Venom while in stealth. This is forcing the mentality of your opponent that they should have to waste their skills when all you're doing is popping these short, short cooldowns because you have no actual cooldowns. And I could just do this forever. I could stay in stealth as long as I want, and the opponent has to just keep dodging around, popping their cooldowns, because they have no idea where I am or what I'm doing for that entire duration that I'm staying stealth. Like, I barely was even trying, and look how long I was in stealth there. Like, a good 8 to 10 seconds. This is a problem. And I don't think they're making it any better. Next, we're going to look at an SD setup. This is a lot easier to say to show because I don't have to do as much switching around. So we're just going to set these up. And I'm not even going to change the trait setup, but I can show you a general thing what's going to happen. So what SD has available to it is we have shadow steps, so we can jump on our opponent. And then we can teleport back and remove Kandi. We can evade and then strip a boon if we land that first attack. And we have a little bit of stealth with Cloak and Dagger, but it's generally not used as heavily as in Dagger Pistol, where stealth is, like, key. We also have Withdraw, which is a cure for... It evades while you're rolling, and then is also an Immobilize cure, a Chilled Krill cure, and a Cripple cure. This is really powerful because it's on a much shorter cooldown than Hide and Shadows, but it isn't. It also isn't a stealth. So you stay visible. The key thing here is you're visible the whole time. And these skills, you're not turning invisible every time you pop it. So the, your opponent actually can see this. Like, they can see me evading towards them, or they can see that tell of me stabbing toward them. They can see these things, and they can actually, like, react to them, like, because they see me. And that's a big deal, because I don't have the same luxury that I do when I'm playing Dagger Pistol, where I can just keep stealthing, and my opponent has to just keep guessing, where am I, where am I? 
So to me, that's a very clear difference between active gameplay and not active gameplay. You can see very clearly where if I was against someone as SD, I have to stay on my toes. I have to be evading non-stop because they can actually see me and react to my abilities. Whereas if I go back to Dagger Pistol, you can see that, oh well, if I get really low, oh that's okay, I'll just stealth and stealth and stealth and stealth until my health regenerates because I was in stealth. Oh, and what do you know, I'm also building might the entire time and blinding my flow all the time. This is very, very problematic to me, and this is exactly why I don't run a Shadow Arts build in World vs. World, because I feel there are too many good things that it, the game just gives to you. I don't like things that are passively just, here, have free stuff. That, to me, is a bad thing. It's a bad feeling for me that I'm being given things. I don't like being given things in-game. Sure, I like being given good loot, but I don't want to be given free wins. It's like, oh, well, this guy's totally wrecking me, but oh, well, I'll just stealth up and heal, and then he, he can't heal because he is... because I'll just interrupt him. Like, that's the thing. You get revealed, but the reveal is only three seconds. Three seconds is not a long time in a game that is as fast-paced as Guild Wars 2, guys. Like, three seconds is nothing. Four seconds, however, in PvP is a really long time, and that's the reason that Shadow Arts isn't going to be used as heavily in PvP. In PvP, you only go two into Shadow Arts because you still want that Condi cleanse if you're playing Dagger Pistol. But... The difference between 3 and 4 seconds is actually pretty huge in a game like Guild Wars 2. 3 seconds is too short, 4 seconds is enough to make the line pretty much obsolete other than a Condi clear. That's how crazy the difference between 3 and 4 seconds is. Now, on to my point, and a lot of what this video is going to turn into now is a discussion about comparing this current stuff that I've just showed you to stuff that they're doing. So, currently, there's no change to the first or the second minor trait in Shadow Arts. These are the same. So, you're still going to bl get cast blinding powder at 25% health to get stealth, and you're still going to have stealth skills lasting longer. A huge change is the third minor, and let me change to this to show you guys. So, the third minor is becoming Resilience of Shadows. Stealth effects that you apply reduce incoming attack damage by 50%. Attack damage is specifically physical damage. So if we hop back in game for a moment, the reason I have issue with this is because currently you can see this is a Grand Master level trait. You have to get a great you have to give up your Grand Master point, which is currently Shadow's Rejuvenation, which is one of the most powerful abilities in the game, because you're healing the entire time you're in stealth, just to get this 50% damage reduction. And the fact that this is Grand Master means that not a lot of people take it because Shadow's Rejuvenation is too good to give up. But now you're giving that to us on a minor trait. Minor implies we get it for free. There's no reason that any thief has to worry about making that choice because it's no longer a choice. We are given it. We are just given it for free. This is a problem to me. Because this is a free damage reduction for something that already has basically access to permanent stealth. So now... In addition to basically having our opponents fully reacting to us jumping out of stealth at them and having to preemptively cast everything, now on top of that, even if they do get lucky, even if they hit us while we're stealthed, which would be the only lucky way to counterplay stealth, well, too bad, we have a reduction. Obviously, this 50% number being changed from a Grandmaster to a Minor, this 50% number is not staying. But the point is, it's a free tankability stat for something that is supposed to be glassy. This is not a good thing for the game, in my opinion. This is a very bad thing. We don't want thieves 
who already have a very powerful mechanic in stealth with limited counterplay to have even more or have even less counterplay because they're constantly tanky while they're in stealth. Next is the Adept, which I'm basically I'm not going to tell you about anything other than the one that will probably be picked, and that's Shadows Embrace. This hasn't changed. It's still remove conditions every three seconds, one condition every three seconds while in stealth. It's still going to be the go-to trait in the Adept. There's no reason to pick anything over it. The first difference comes in the master traits, and the reason that is is because currently in game, at the master level, really there's nothing worth taking for us. We have patience, regain initiative faster while in stealth. It's like okay, that's pretty good, but the interval's 10 seconds, which is terrible. Leeching venoms, we don't have venoms. Hidden thief, stealing grand stealth, eh, it's kind of cool, but it's not really good. And power shots, short bow and harpoon damage. Why would we take that? We're using our dagger. So these aren't really useful. So that's why we usually take cloaked and shadow to blind nearby foes when we steal or when we gain stealth or gain initiative when we enter stealth so we can stealth for longer periods of time because we're constantly gaining stealth. So we're constantly gaining an init bonus initiative and we can do our combo more, etc., etc. So now... Instead of that, we have the situation where we don't need, we don't have that anymore, so we have to pick a new one. Well, it just so happens that they're giving us this lovely trait, which is Descent of Shadows. Currently, it's crappy in on live, because it's just, oh, we get blinding powder and stealth when we fall. Well, the big difference now is they're rolling into that when you steal or take falling damage. So basically... Now, not only do we get our free fall damage trait, but we're also for free getting the ability to stealth on steel, which is just one more way that we're gaining more stealth time. This is not good. This is a lot more ways to gain stealth, which we didn't need because we already could basically permanently maintain it if we wanted to and played it properly. This is You can kind of see why I'm getting a little worked up about this, this trait line. This is very bad for the game. And then the biggest change, and this is where I'm really, I don't know why ArenaNet is doing this, is Shadow's Rejuvenation, which was already the best in-slot Grandmaster trait for Shadow Arts, is getting buffed. Remember that really crappy trait, which was uh, Patience? Oh, one initiative every 10 seconds while in stealth. That really sucks. Well, what if that was better? What if it was once every three seconds and we got healing on top of it? Well, that's what they decided to do. They rolled Patience, which was a terrible, terrible trait that no one would pick, into a Grandmaster trait, which was already our best choice in slot for these crazy Shadow Arts builds. Like, why would you ever pick even Cloaked in Shadow, which was like the best adept thing for us to have in our Master slot, why would you ever pick that over something that's giving you initiative and healing while you're in stealth? I do not understand the logic. Obviously, everything is subject to change. The intervals, the amount of health you gain, the amount of initiative you gain, this is all subject to change. But currently, from the statistics we have and the info we have, I don't like this change. And now I'm going to show you the difference that I see between this and acrobatics. This is the new acrobatics line. But before I do that, let me quick show you the key parts that I think define acrobatics currently. In acrobatics currently, we have gain swiftness upon dodging, which is cool. We have feline grace, which is currently a passive in a sense. When we dodge, we get 15 endurance back. So if I go back to my build, or just get three in acro to show you this, if you watch my dodge bar closely, I'll dodge and then immediately get 15 back. So this lends itself to the gameplay of Sword Dagger because you can dodge more often because you have this innate 15% returned endurance. So it makes for a little more active gameplay. Well, that's those are like, in my opinion, the 
things about acrobatics that I just love. Like, those are really amazing. And the last one would be Vigorous Recovery, which I think is probably the best uh, adept trait choice in this particular line, which is gain vigor when using a healing skill, 5 and 3 4 seconds of vigor. So if on a, something like Withdraw, which is on a 15 second cooldown, gaining vigor on top of healing is a pretty good deal, especially when you already have 15% endurance regen. So if I slot this really quick, you'll see if I roll, now I have vigor, and that 15 quickly becomes basically 50% of that bar back. So what really was returning 15 is now returning essentially half your endurance bar. So you can roll quite often when you're playing this setup. Now, let's talk about what they're doing to acrobatics and why I think this is a more healthy gameplay decision than currently what they're doing to Shadow Arts. So, in our miners, we still have swiftness upon dodging, which is good, but then things change. What is currently returning 15 endurance to us for free is now Feline Grace on a 3 second internal cooldown, gain vigor upon successfully evading an attack. 2 seconds of 120%, and you're wondering, why 120%? Well, if you look ahead to the third miner, Endless Stamina, this is a new miner completely, the effects of vigor on you are enhanced, so effectiveness increased 20%. So, instead of 100% endurance regen, we get 120% endurance regen when we have vigor. So, it is, I think, a little bit less math-wise than currently the flat 15 we get, but overall it's more healthy for the game. And the reason I say that is because it's upon successfully evading an attack. This is a key thing. This means that if I'm in game, I can't just go, wee, wee, let's roll around because I'm getting free endurance back. No, you can't do that anymore. That's not how this is going to work. Now, if you want to get the most out of this line, you have to actively dodge attacks properly. So when you see this word evade pop up, that's when you get your vigor. Not just, oh, I'm rolling, I get free stuff back. No, you have to properly evade an attack. This is a big, big deal for active gameplay that I enjoy. Because it means if I play well, I'm rewarded. Not just, oh, I did something, I'm rewarded because I did that thing. So, Vigorous Recovery is basically the same in the Adept, uh, except it's 5 seconds now, not 5 and 3 fourths seconds. So it's still really strong. Pain Response used to be a... Master, I want to say. And it hasn't changed much. Uh, it's down to a 20 second cooldown rather than a 30 second, but it essentially does the same thing. When you're struck below 75%, it removes all these condies and you gain region. So it's essentially the same thing. This is actually a compelling choice. I think these are pretty equal. It depends on how strong you end up needing to have vigor. I think for players that are good and can make effective use of their dodging, they might actually not be able, they might not need Vigorous Recovery because they'll be getting Feline Grace procs. We don't know. We need to see how good players can be, because if a really good player gets a lot of Feline Grace procs, then maybe they can take Pain Response over Vigorous Recovery. We don't know yet. We'll have to see. Master. Uh, guarded Initiation, pretty cool. Don't really know. It might be taken, but it's kind of just a gimmicky initiation thing. You gain resistance, which is essentially condies don't do anything to you for five seconds. It's kind of cool, but I don't know if people will take it. And then here's the two that I think are probably the most likely to be taken. Swindler's Equilibrium. Successfully evading. So there's this successfully evading again. So this is active gameplay. An attack while wielding a sword specifically recharges steel by a static amount. One second with a one second cooldown. So now, in addition to SD Thieves, who kind of currently are just all about the rolls and the evade frames and on their sword and stuff, well now, every time you roll an evade an attack, or every time you dodge an evade an attack with your three, you're going to reduce your steel cooldown so you can steal much more often. And this is actually a pretty huge deal because steel 
for those of you that don't know, if you're going into trickery, is a daze and also does all these other things. It strips boons, it gives us vigor, it gives us fury, it gives us might, it gives us swiftness. This is good. In my opinion, steel maybe gives us a little too much for free, just like SA does, but I'm not complaining. This is trickery is by far our strongest line, I think. Okay, so that's good. This is good for active gameplay because it's, again, it's rewarding the player for doing something correct. And then hard to catch when we are stunned or disabled in any manner. We break that stun and we gain our 100% of our endurance back, which means we can go back to dodging, which in turn means we'll go back to getting vigor and we'll go back to getting steel reduction. This is good. This is very good. It's It encourages this skillful gameplay where you shouldn't just be wasting your resources, your endurance bar, non-stop. And then Grandmaster, you have Assassin's Reward, not very good. Quick Pockets, gain initiative on swapping weapons while in combat, eh. And then Don't Stop, periodically evade projectile attacks while under the effects of swiftness. I think don't stop is probably what's going to be taken. It depends on what exactly it means by periodically evade projectiles while under swiftness. Because as you remember from our miner, we get swiftness. Now, if periodically evade means you'll dodge a series of projectiles, then this is ridiculous and very strong. If it means you dodge one projectile among an entire rapid fire, well, it's not necessarily the best, but compared to the other two, it's still probably better. So Grandmaster is a bit up in the air. But this is basically where a key thing is for me. Now that I've showed you Shadow Arts and Acrobatics, you can see that there is a very large difference in playstyle. Shadow Arts is a lot about being inactive with your gameplay. You basically are stealthing and waiting for your opponent to react to you without knowing where you are. So basically in Shadow Arts you're forcing this idea on your opponent that they have to use their abilities and then you can easily exploit them using those abilities like say double dodging because they think you're gonna they're gonna jump you because you're just staying stealth. They don't know what you're gonna do. So as soon as they you see them dodge roll twice, oh, well, I can just jump them now because they have no dodges yet left. And what is the counterplay to that? There isn't one. There's no counterplay to stealth at the moment. Whereas in acrobatics, you're not hiding. You're you're completely visible, like, 80% of the time, I would say, maybe even more. And you have to actively fight your opponent because they can see you the whole time. They have just as much ability to counterplay you as you have the ability to counterplay them. And that makes for very active gameplay. It makes for very fast gameplay. It means it's going to be very close fights if e between equally skilled players because both of you can react to each other. Whereas in Shadow Arts, it's like, oh, if the Shadow Arts player starts losing, they'll just stealth for a bit, and then they'll fight. So even if they're outmatched, they have the fallback of stealth to just heal them up, gain initiative, and with the trait changes, have damage reduction, and all this crazy stuff for free. Um, so I don't really... I, I guess it's very obvious that I have a bias, because I like the more in-your-face kind of active gameplay, and that's exactly why I play the build that I do. Like, it seems weird to see this kind of setup, because no other, like, this is dagger pistol, but it's, you're not stealthing. You're more focused on blind spam and, like, uh, evade frames, more like SD. But that's because I don't like the freeness of Shadow Arts, and I don't understand why they're insistent on making this line so powerful for free. Um, some ideas that I've just been having, like, how you do, how do you fix this? Because obviously, it's no good if I just say, this is broken, ain't it? Do something. Like, that's not helpful to them. What I need to do is think of ways to fix this. So, how do you fix something that has permanent stealth? Well, like I said, the difference between 3 seconds and 4 seconds is a pretty big deal when it comes to PvP versus world versus world. Like, 
The reason you don't see Shadow Arts in PvP is because 4 seconds is an incredibly long time. But in World vs. World, 3 seconds? Forget it. You have so much open space, you can hide... Like, you can just short bow away and then re-stealth. Like, it's not a big deal to wait 3 seconds. So maybe they roll over the 4 second reveal time and normalize that, make that the standard for World vs. World, so there's counterplay to Thief in World vs. World because they're, they're not in stealth for a lot longer period of time and you have more time to pressure them because they can't immediately re-stealth. Or maybe we remove active, the, all the passive benefits. So like, if you look at Shadow Arts, and if you guys remember this minor trait, gain might when you gain stealth. So that would be like, if you watch, as soon as I gain stealth, bam, I get might. So what if stealth worked like that, where you got the upfront benefits of stealthing? So you couldn't, you wouldn't want to stay in stealth because the benefits were maybe short term. So maybe this might, maybe this might lasts way too long, like 16 seconds. That's huge. Maybe we make that might only 4 seconds, or 3 seconds. So you stealth, and then you immediately have to react if you want to get the benefit of those boons. That is good active gameplay, because it means you have to have an incentive to leave stealth. You don't want to stay in stealth, because to get the most out of it, you have to immediately act to get the most out of your thing. If you did something like that, this 2 might? What if you made that 5 might? Like, yeah, it's easy to give up two might, but can you really give up five might, like, on your backstab? Like, backstab already does, like, 1,800 damage with the two might. You see that bump up to 1,900 damage if you hit them from behind. What if that was five might or ten might? Would you really want to give that up if it was that short duration? That's a huge benefit to active gameplay because you have to immediately act. It's a benefit that you get, but only for a short time. So there's no incentive to keep stacking and stacking and stacking your stealth because the benefits don't keep stacking. You only get them as you enter stealth the very first time. I think that's one way you can fix stealth is make the benefits shorter term or not permanent. And then the last idea I had was maybe stacking the revealed duration if you repeatedly stealth. So... Like, right now, you always get the same amount of stealth, and you always get the same amount of revealed debuff of 3 seconds in World vs. World, and 4 seconds in PvP. Well, what if the game somehow knew that, oh, you stealthed, and then you lost stealth without being hit, so you didn't actually gain the revealed debuff, but then you re-stealthed again? What if just the game detecting that you did that increased this internal timer that slowly ticks up the more and more it detects you do that and your reveal timer is longer because it detects you stealth for longer or maybe you make the revealed timer scale based on the amount of time you spend in stealth so if you stay in stealth for 10 seconds maybe your revealed timer has to be proportional to that so instead of just three seconds because you were in stealth for 10 seconds you have to suffer through a revealed timer of half that like five seconds this is another good thing because it means you can't constantly just be stealthing because you have longer windows of time for the opponent to react to you because your revealed debuff is longer if you acted. The point is, I want to reward active gameplay. Another idea that, like, just as I'm talking, what if, t if you land a backstab out of stealth or you land, like, our stealth skill, what if that somehow interacted with our revealed debuff like it removed our revealed debuff faster if you land that attack like what if you made revealed something crazy like five or six seconds but if you landed your stealth skill what if it shortens the revealed duration down to like two seconds instead of that six that actually is a pretty big deal because it means you had to actively hit your ability and if your opponent somehow managed to dodge it or you miss it well then you're punished for it the idea is that you need to add counterplay. Currently, there's a lack of it. There needs to be more of it. And I think these are a few ways that you can maybe do that. Like, what they're doing to acrobatics, those things like successfully innovating an attack. Well, what does stealth have for that? It has nothing. It's just, you get you stealth, you get stuff. It's free. You don't have to worry about it. What if 
successfully landing your stealth attack was rewarded. Like, oh, you did something proper, you used stealth correctly. Here, have a reward. I think that's a good thing. This is ideas that ArenaNet can use to balance stealth, because currently stealth is basically king in World vs. World. These builds that have stealth, which are like PU Mesmers, which is prismatic understanding if you don't know, and the Pistol Dagger Condi Thief, and the Dagger Pistol Thief, these builds are strong because they have no counterplay. It's just you get free stuff while you're in stealth. Free stuff is a bad thing, like in high amounts. Like, if a PU Mesmer can stealth and gain all these boons, what incentive do they have to ever not be continuously stealthing? They're getting all these free things. Why would you give that up? Or Dagger Pistol. If you're getting all this free stuff, why do you want to not be in stealth? You get free stuff. This is not rewarding gameplay. This is just, oh, I can stealth and get free stuff, so then I win the fight. Yay! This is a very unhealthy thing to do. I think... More so than anything, I want to see Thief be rewarded regardless of how I play it. So if I stealth, I want if I want to play a stealth gameplay, I want to feel like, oh, I stealth because I, sh I should do that, and then I get rewarded for doing that short duration, get in there, do the backstab, and then get out again. And maybe I have to fight for a little while because I revealed myself. I'm perfectly okay with that as long as I'm being properly incentivized to leave stealth. Currently, there's a lot of rewards for going into stealth. I don't think there's enough incentive to leave it. So, I think that is one area that ArenaNet can look at and really kind of mull over in their head, like, oh, maybe we do have too little counterplay to this, because I know ArenaNet tends to balance a lot around PvP and PvE um, sometimes, but they really don't look at World vs. World, because the World vs. World is inherently imbalanced. Like, they did kind of look at it when they did the stability changes, but that's not really the individual class-by-class -class basis. Like, oh, Thief is really strong right now with stealth. We should do something about that, because in PvP, no one stealths a lot, so it's not a big deal, right? Well, to the people who roam and have to deal with these builds that are non-stop stealthing, it's a huge deal. And that is a percentage of your player base. Like, it might not be the largest percentage, but the players are out there, and I think rewards should be given to the players who play their class to the utmost, like, level. Like, if, if, like, I get no sense of accomplishment playing a Shadow Arts build, so I don't. Like, that's basically the worst possible feeling as a player to me, because... It's a part of my class. I should get to use it, but I don't want to because I think the line gives me too many things for free. Like, yeah, other players do it, but that doesn't mean I personally want to do it. I think there needs to be equality. Like, they want all builds to be viable, but in the new system, I don't see a reason that for players to not go into Shadow Arts because... It's just rewarding the same passive gameplay. The same people who are using Shadow Arts now are the same people that are going to do it in the future, and probably even more so because it's giving you even more passive benefits for being basically a bad player who hides in stealth all the time. I don't like that. I like Thief players to be really fast, like, oh, you can... Like, the reason Thief duels are over in, like, two seconds is because one player lands a backstab, and then it's just over. But if two thieves are running shadow arts the fight can last like five ten minutes because they're just non-stop stealthing 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 waiting for the other one to mess up their stealth combo and then oh well you messed up your stealth combo i guess i win now like that's how is that fun for anyone involved i think there needs to be change this needs to be thought about as we're going forward with the game so if i had to sum up everything i want more active rewards for coming out of stealth and i want there to be counterplay to stealth i don't know how you would do it but i think i've given a few different ways that i think could maybe work and i really hope that arena Net takes this feedback and uses it i know i'm just some random player making a video but hey 
so is everyone else who's talking about it on Reddit or the forums or wherever. So these are my thoughts. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think if you want to share your comments down below, or I'll probably have a Reddit thread up and you can share them there. I'd love to discuss this concept because the more I play Thief, the more I've realized that counterplay and this active gameplay concept is really important to me, and currently the class is kind of in a weird spot where we want to be active, but we're not because we have certain builds that abuse stealth, and it's just a big mess. So. I'd love to know what you guys think. I will gladly discuss it with you in the comments down below or on Reddit or wherever you see this video. So these are my thoughts. I hope they are taken into consideration and I will see you guys next time.